next to that lovely Riley is the equally lovely Lagonda. Today on Car Traction, you can join us at a very foggy Lowton Park for the 2022 VSCC Hill Climb Meeting here. Now today we'll be seeing all forms of pre-war machinery such as this Fraser Nash, Austin 7s, Aero Engine cars, all sorts of lovely sounding pre-war cars and lovely looking pre-war cars. So I'm really looking forward to today. Did a video on this event last year, so after watching this one of course, please check that one out. But I think now we'll... Racing hasn't quite started yet, it's probably only about half eight still now. Racing starts at 8.45, so I'll have a quick look around some of the cars, like that wonderful Bentley, parked up over here. Then we'll go down into the paddock, it's a really nice paddock here, all on grass. Well, half of it's on grass, really, and the cars just look really good parked up on the grass. But yeah, let's see if we can spot any gems, such as this Fraser Nash, and this wonderful Bentley. We've come here in the MX-5 this morning. It's a very, very foggy day, but a nice day for a drive nonetheless. Right, what have we got over here? Something green. I like how quiet it is around here. No annoying public getting in the way. <laughs> right, what's this over here then? I'll have to have a look around the front. And Elvis. That is very, very nice. You can see the twin cars just peeking up there. Over here we've got a Lotus Esprit parked up. Bit of a rarity there. And over here is definitely one of my favourites from last year's event and no doubt one of my favourites from this year, a supercharged Riley. Now this really, really is nice. You can see the supercharger slung on the front there. This does sound quite good. Just a little four-cylinder. Well, it's probably not lit on, actually, but it really does sound quite good. Really my sort of car, this one. I can't wait to see this sort of thing on track because it's not raining, which I like, but the track will be very, very greasy with the amount of fog here today. I mean, you can see, look, how wet are those tyres, so it'll be really interesting to see these things being tested to the limit at the hill climb today because these sorts of cars are meant to be driven sideways really it's the quickest way around the corner so that'll make for very very exciting viewing over here we've got a little lineup of austin sevens that'll be ready to compete sometime in the day And among other things in the paddock down there is this pre-war Vauxhall, which looks really, really special, that. That is a lovely looking car, that. Some form of large straight six, I'm sure, in there. What a fantastic car that is. Over here we've got some really, really odd cars, possibly even Edwardian, starting off with this Chalmers. What a beautiful car that is. That must be such a handful. These are so talkative, they're probably only revved to about, I don't know, 4,000 RPM redline or something like that. But they're just so, so talky, which means those will be very easy to spin. And of course, no power steering or anything, obviously. So really, really heavy steering. You have to be a talented driver to wrestle this sort of thing up a tight hill climb like Lowton Park. So hats off to the drivers. Of these things I'm sure there's some complicated way of driving got the gear stick and handbrake and then a little horn looks like the accelerators in the right place but I don't know which of those will be the brake or clutch Charles Motorco Detroit USA I love the old dials of these it's like being in a sort of pre-war aircraft isn't it very very cool and that engine as well Really talky four-cylinder, probably a huge litre, it's probably like five litre or something, four-cylinder. I do love these really, really old ones. Over here we've got something really, really special, a Lancia. Seen a lot of prestigious manufacturers today, we'll be seeing ERAs, all sorts here. 
What a beautiful car that is. I do really, really like the VSCC events because you get such high-end stuff like this Lancia. It's just amazing, isn't it? What a lovely shape that is. Huge manifold and exhaust. Quick look at the engine. Might even be an aero engine. There will be a couple of cars here that are most likely aero engined. Lovely brass radiator as well there. That's a special looking car that isn't it? Same can be said for this one. Now I don't really know like the manufacturers of the these because this, this doesn't even have anything on it. I could tell the other two obviously Lancia and then Chalmers but I don't these really aren't my special point but I do really really like them. They're not my speciality here but what amazing cars these are. We have the wonderful ERA. This one gets everywhere. Goodwood Festival of Speed. I was here last year for the VSCC event and it is an absolutely gorgeous racing car. Just looking like the little ERA logo on the taco. You can see the little thing on the front just to get that little bit of time shaved off. Just covering up the radiator. Maybe the engine's running a bit cold or something. So that's what you do. You just cover it up to heat it up a bit. These, of course, would be supercharged. Huge brakes there. Fantastic piece of racing machinery, that. Now, this right that was a Riley, actually. I said it was an Alfa. It always makes me think of those glorious pre-war Alfa Romeos. Because I'm sure, if you know what I'm talking about, you'll understand what I mean. But it really is lovely. What a beautiful car this is. Look at those wire wheels as well. Everything about it. It's just so, so nice. I love the spring steering wheels as well of these two cars here. Just so, so lovely, aren't they? Very, very nice. And over there is an MGE. Over here we've got a couple of little 500cc, probably special. That's probably a Cooper, that one. First of the rear engine little racing cars. Now, what is this? Is it a, a GN? This one is... Looks very good in the sort of semi polished metal, isn't it? They've got an MG over here, I presume it's supercharged. Got the very nice Brooklyn's little screens there as well. There will be a lot of these supercharged MGs here today, and I really do like them. You can see the little yellow X, that means it's the driver's first season of racing, and if it's your first season of racing, that is one hell of a car to start off with. Got a Fraser Nash here, you can always see the Fraser Nash has had the back wheels are a sort of narrower track than the front wheels. That really, really is lovely. Some of these would have been four, some of these would have been six cylinder. That is gorgeous, that isn't it? I love the oily rag look. Oh, I so love these old drum brakes, they just look so good, don't they? Uh, one thing, another thing that I love is the external gear lever and handbrake. I don't know which one, so that's probably the gear lever and handbrake actually, but they do look good, don't they? Right, one next, another Fraser Nash. These really are special pieces of kit. And another Fraser Nash here. Lovely, lovely cars, aren't they? Like I said, they look brilliant on the grass. And there you can see the twin SUs. That's that's probably a force on the on that phrase Nash over there. Lovely looking and sounding cars. Now what is this? You often have to look around the front to determine what they actually are. But it certainly looks very, very nice. Uh, this is a Riley this one. Gorgeous looking cars, these pre-war races, aren't they? Really, really nice. Got a few Rileys over here. One with its four cylinder on show. Got the twin issues up there as well. And a few more Rileys up here. Three SU carburetors adorn the beautiful engine of this Fraser Nash. What a lovely car that is. Then we've got not a Fraser Nash, but a Fraser Nash BMW. 
see the rear hinge doors this is something very very different you don't see these at all pretty much a very very pretty looking car that I think yeah Fraser Nash BMW very very nice to see that sort of thing on the road then we've got an Alvis 1250 see this one around quite a lot at various VSCC events as do I see this Fraser Nash BMW around Great to see these cars still being used. Oh, hello. I've just seen something very interesting coming in now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is a Jaguar Mark 10. Am I right? That's really rare, that. Foreign registered as well. Left-hand drive. That is a real rarity. Automatic gearbox. That is a real, real rarity. You hardly ever see those. Next to that lovely Riley is the equally lovely Lagonda. That's really, really nice, that. A lot of beautiful sounding cars here today. And we've got the little Austin 7 Special over there as well. A couple more Rileys over here. Lovely pieces of racing machinery. That one's really clean, actually. This one, not quite so, but I think that's how they should look, a bit weathered. Now this is something different, a Morgan. I don't think I've seen this one before. Very rare to see such an early Morgan being raced. And then we've got a Lee Francis, that's a real rarity that. What a lovely Toro that is. Another supercharged MG with, this time you can see the supercharger, carburetor powered. That is lovely that. What's this over here then? Ah, uh, this is another Lagonda. Very, very nice. Lovely filler cap, isn't it? I love that dial over there. All the dials of these cars just look so, so good, don't they? Alright, this is a Tolbert, so that will, so that will... I remember this one, I think it's got a straight six in it, and it sounds fantastic. Lovely, lovely car. really really is very nice now watch this one I do love the style of the old tyres this is a Wolseley special it's really special isn't it a lot of the cars here today have the Brooklands smaller windscreens which is nice to see they do look good on anything got another Fraser Nash here next to the wonderful Tolbert very nice looking Riley here Next, that is a Fraser Nash. Now, that's a really early one there. That's lovely, that. You can see the float chamber of the carburetor just peeking out there. We've got an MG special. Oh, I know that one, yeah, I've seen that one a lot around. Got the twin tyres, that was very common with other hill climbing cars. Huge supercharger on the front. Huge carburetor as well to assist that. Yeah, in period they would have had two tyres at the back to aid traction. That really is a special car. That that is very very nice. Got that thing as fishtail, wasn't it called the exhaust there as well? I would really like to see that on track. Another Fraser Nash over here. Um, Next to this wonderful Alvis. Very lovely Bentley tour over here as well. Once again, huge drum brakes there. That is a very, very lovely looking car. There is a very famous car, the Norris Special Fraser Nash been on TV and magazines pretty much everywhere. It is a lovely car. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous racing car, that. Same can be said for this one next to it. I love the earlier, thinner, well it's not even a radiator actually there, but the thinner intake just makes them look that bit earlier. So that I think looks like a small ERA. But both of them equally very, very nice. Here's something behind me, that's an Alvis, I believe. A 
However, there's another real beauty in the form of this Riley. Even the little Riley branded lights there, you can just see the little Riley logo. This is a gorgeous car, isn't it? That is lovely. Very, very early bucket seats. You can see the gearbox is right there. You leave going straight into the gearbox. That is gorgeous, that isn't it? Now, under a cover here is what I think is a Bugatti, because you can see the very distinctive Bugatti wheels just under there, and just the shape of it makes me think Bugatti, so it'll be really special to see that on track. Interesting how the cover actually has like a little hole for the thing to stick through, so it's probably like an interesting cover on itself, isn't it? But something else under here, I can't quite tell what that is, but I'm pretty sure this is a Bugatti, something like a Type 35 or something like that. Got a Cognac over here, that's a real rarity, that. I haven't seen one of those before. Another Riley. What gorgeous engines these little specials have. Everything is just so nicely oiled, isn't it? Frozen Ash, and this is this is uh, one that I've seen quite around around quite a lot. Little Morgan. There's the MG. That's a really really special car. That next to another little Riley. So this special here is actually a GM chassis and has an aero engine in it. So that was used to be in an aeroplane and then it was like sort of converted to be more ideal for using in a car. So that really is very, very interesting that. Now this Alvis really is something special. See the little, if I twist around you can see the little Alvis logo there. Lovely Jager. Taco there going up to 6,000 rpm. Like I said, a lot of these don't rev that high, they're just that torquey. It's very, very nice. That lovely period correct leather straps holding that mighty engine in place. Of course, some of these cars will have later indicators and brake lights to be road legal, which might well, it's not obviously the correct for the era, but I get that because what a fantastic car that must be to drive on the road. Over here's another little Austin special. You can see all the goings on here of underneath a hill climb car, that's like a Jap Morgan type engine, I'm sure. Pretty much a motorbike engine, probably. These things must be so light. Of course, a lot of the cars here are chain drive. You can just see in there. Very nice little fuel cap. I like the elements of brass. Look at that lovely two little gauges there. All you need, really. Speeders aren't really that useful to racing drivers and hill climb drivers, while an RPM or tachometer much more useful to make sure you're not ragging your end in too much they got some form of the special ah this is the granny quite a well-known car comes to a lot of vscc events that's a really famous car pretty similar to that one in that i think it's got like a jap motorbike engine or something obviously i can't tell now but that is quite a historic car that one another little austin 7 special these do look good very low don't they Oh, I can hear a Wolseley six-cylinder just rolling in over there, that's nice. Lovely sounding six-cylinder, that. What's an MG special over here, that's quite a different one, supercharger. Actually, it's actually an MG branded supercharger, that's quite interesting. This is like the iconic shape of any racing car or hill climb car. Oh, I can see an Austin 7. Well, now you can't, but yeah, there was an Austin 7 that's going past somewhere. As I was saying, this is the iconic shape of car. That really does look good, doesn't it? Surprisingly small steering wheel as well. I think we'll see the uh, little Austin emerge imminently. There it is. Not sure that's one of the competing cars, but looks like 
may have had some racing or modifications done to it. Speaking of Austin's, we've got another 7 Special over here with the little engine on show. All very nice in there. Another probably home-built hill climb car. Very, very light as I said. This is Adro. And this is something a bit different, a proper nice Austin Special. I can't remember what these are called. They're very rare pedal cars made of this shape. But I just can't remember what it's called. But that is lovely. Got the aero screen there as well. What a lovely shape that is. That is a really, really pretty car, that one. It's pretty similar to all the other Austin 7 Specials, as you can see, but this body really is lovely, isn't it? Makes it look like a sort of diddy version of that MG over there, doesn't it, really? It's got the shape, hasn't it? That is lovely, that. I just can't remember what the little pedal cars were called and what type of special this is. Oh, what is it? Please let me know in the comments if you can think, and because I can't, and that'd be very helpful. And then on the end, it's another Austin Seven Special. Three lovely carburetors on the Alvis. I can't get over how wonderful these engines look. been chatting to the owner of this GN says so I said Cognac earlier but that's because CO is the the initials of the owner GN chassis and an AC engine and this has been in constant use apart from war years since 1925 which is a really amazing story and the owner of that also owns this Bentley three litre and I think it's a different engine to the car but it's a three litre chassis and it does 0 to 60 in six seconds which for a car from the 1930s is really quite incredible Wheel spinning out of every corner apparently, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one go around. It's like quite special. Originally it would have weighed a lot, but now it apparently only weighs three quarters of a ton, which is just like wow. So so light. The engine tuned all sorts, so it's really, really special. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that one. Just had this Bentley arrive as well. That is a really chunky one, isn't it? Very, very lovely car. Oh, I've seen something I like. It's aero engine. I think it's called the Pick Pick. It's like Pitkin Pitcan or something, but that that is my favourite car. That is beautiful. I'm so looking forward to seeing that on track because every time I come here, it's always that one that impresses me because it is absolutely stunning. So this GN is actually powered by two aerial motorbike engines. It's for 1,000 cc, so. Quick maths adds up to 2,000, but two engines in this, that's mad. All the cars have to be sound tested before going out on their runs. Right, so I'm sure you agree I've done enough talking, so I've turned my mic around to face all the action that'll be soon taking place on track because I'm sure I've had enough of listening to me and can't wait, like me, to listen to these fantastic cars. Sounds like there's still quite a bit of fog at the top of the course so they're still holding off the cars for now but it gives me a chance to look at this absolutely glorious pick pick. Yes, that is what it's called. What? Ah, here it says. Picard Pick Tent. It is absolutely beautiful. Just just look at it, honestly. Look at that. Is. You've got the rocker assembly on shoe. Going dee 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 there. Probably an aero engine, I'd imagine. It's just amazing. I really, really like it. Yeah, there you go, Pick Pick. Got a little logo there. That really is a glorious vintage racing car. As the Chalmers starts up. I do really, really like that one. 
I've just noticed on the aero engine, I presume, of this Picard Pictet, there is a US Army plaque just there, as if it's like an aero engine off an American plane or something. I did accidentally say it was French, but yes, it is it's actually Swiss. Yeah, Swiss, but still, what a glorious car that is. I can't get over how well engineered the rocker and valves just look, it just looks so good. I love how this golf's alarm has gone off because of the noise of this car. Fast forward about an hour and a half later, I think we're ready to go. There are actually two Bugattis now, one of them's running. There's the new blue one.
we've come back to the car for imminent butties, but just beyond this MGA is a Swiss registered Jaguar Mark 10. Now it's a real rarity to see a Jaguar Mark 10 at all, but a Swiss registered left hand drive. That's really rare that. I can't remember the last time I saw a Mark 10, but I've definitely never seen a Swiss registered one. Very luxurious automatic car. So rare that. Next to the MGA, we've got a very, very nice MG saloon here. Next to a Fiat van. Wow. I like the how it says Fiat on the lamps, that's a nice little touch. And then there's another very nice Riley in the sort of condition that me and Dad like. And on the end of Riley Tora. Lovely interior there. Then we've got one of the racers that we saw going around earlier over there. Let's have a closer look at this. That'll be a large litre engine, four cylinder, Ford powered I believe. If it's Ford it may be side valve, I'm not sure. Saying that the shape of the engine looks like overhead valve, but I don't know. The MP Special this one is. What a lovely dash in there. It's very nice. Up here there are quite a few more classics. Got a Fraser Nash BMW. Seen this one at various VSCC events. Trialing and auto testing and things like that. Got a Morgan Aero. That's quite an early one as well with the curved glass. Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. Another very lovely Riley Tora. That looks brilliant in that colour, doesn't it? So, so clean inside at the... It's amazing that an Alvis next to another Alvis and a lovely Wol Wolseley pre war Wolseley Hornet. We saw a Wolseley Hornet special being hill climbed, but this is the car that it would have been based on. Lovely six cylinder pre war saloon. Lots of lovely VSCC cars here. Right, as we go further up. We've got even more, another very nice Riley. We've got an MGB. I wasn't expecting to see one of those and something very, very old behind it. Now, what is this? It is a Sunbeam, I think. That's very, very rare and couldn't be further from the Sunbeam is this Lancia Delta Integrale. I've just spotted another real rarity over here. It's a little sprite, but with a hard top. That's very rare, that. So this is basically an Austin Healy sprite underneath, but with a different body on. Now, that is really, really rare. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. You can see the racing sliding windows there. A Sebring top, I believe that's called. That is very, very rare, that. Never seen one of those before as the MGB goes. Left hand drive as well, French registered. While I was smitten with all the other classic and vintage cars here, I'd fail to notice this lovely Vauxhall saloon as the Porsche drive past. That is really, really rare. There's lots of lovely classics here. More vintage cars. Is there some something else I think I can see uh, something Fraser Nash I believe over there but this Vauxhall looks in quite original condition as well really quite a special sight they got us in the MX-5 over there and now what is this Fraser Nash Somehow when I was looking at the Sebring Sprite, well this Frozen Nash has come since, but I failed to notice this Alfa Romeo Giulietta now. 
I was saying stuff like that is rare, which it is very, but this is also equally extremely rare. One of these came up for auction recently and I wonder if it's this one, because there can't be many of these around at all. There are actually many classics dotted around, there's a Moggy Minor Traveller over there under the tree, a convertible Mustang. What else is there? We've got a Rover P6 over here. No, oh yes, this is a V8 one as well. But is it a 3500S? That is the question, is it manual? Ah, oh, no, this is the automatic, so it's just a 3500, but still a very interesting spot. Let's see what else we can see. Over here we have a thoroughbred Mustang next to the TVR. That's not a thoroughbred, it's electric, in case you didn't know. And a Saab 9000. Wow. A lot of rarities here. Modern Porsche and an MGB. I've spotted something else up here. Is it a Lagonda? Yes, it is a Lagonda. That is lovely. What a graceful car that is. And then there's more over there. There's an MG next to an E-Type. This MG BGT looks very good on those larger mini lights. And over here is an MG CGT next to another TVR, this time a Tuscan. Now this is actually quite an early MGC because it's got the earlier wheel and I've just realised it's also left hand drive. There are three left hand drive cars we've seen. Two MGs now and what was the other? Oh, I can't remember now. Wow, we're having our fair share of foreign cars. That's got an F on there, so France. <laughs> Thank you. That took a bit of thinking that yeah. I've just realised that this MG that I like, it's left hand drive. Left hand drive cars are absolutely everywhere today for some reason.
but I think with that those are the last ones so we'll be heading back now and that's it for this video so all sorts of wonderful pre-war cars fantastic sounding engines glorious looking cars the little Cooper goes there there truly aren't enough adjectives to describe this meet. I love seeing all the cars on the course and also all parked up on the grass together. They do look really good. And especially that last batch with like the ERA, the two Bugattis, which is just amazing to see that sort of thing. A million pound cars, pretty much, I think. I'm not too good on the values, but I'm sure well, that black Bugatti is getting up to seven figure prices but now it's time for me to stop waffling if you want to check out last year's VSCC Lowton Park that was quite a good event hopefully I'll go next year all things being well but yep yeah, that's me closing up this video please subscribe for more content like this check out the channel homepage and that's all bye for now